This story starts when the first quarter update letter came out, which was uh, just last week. And Tesla was talking about their production. And I, I love the idea of we're, we're no longer going to be talking about Tesla as an electric car manufacturer. We're going to be talking about them as a premium car manufacturer. You know, we're going to forget the fact that they are electric because it doesn't matter anymore. They just make better cars. So in this little chart here on the right, you can see that they were comparing the Model 3 uh, to its competitors. Now they're using market share, which I think is a weird way of doing this analysis. I'm not sure how they did that because there clearly are many more uh, cars, many more models of cars in this uh, area. And so it doesn't make sense to like only, you know, cherry pick these ones for your analysis that considering these ones aren't even the biggest ones in this category. So this got me really thinking and I wanted to dig into that. So I've got some really interesting data here to, talk, to show you. And the first thing though about this, just to clarify, because I like to be accurate about these things, let me kind of zoom in here and it's the resolution kind of sucks, but you can see it says, mid-sized premium sedans. Well, that that is actually uh, not true. Uh, the Tesla Model 3 is technically mid-size, but the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, Lexus IS, Mercedes C-Class, all the other ones on this chart are not. They're technically compact. So, you know, there's some mislabeling there, but that's fine. Um, we can think of them as the competitors, but this got me thinking, what is midsize? How is it defined? And it turns out that uh, the way that these things are defined is, is kind of archaic. Um, but on the EPA website, uh, they have uh, on fueleconomy.gov, they, they actually have that here. There's this uh, chart which shows you the vehicle size classes. And what these are is it, it, it takes the passenger and cargo volume. So uh, basically the interior, uh, you know, uh, cubic feet plus any cargo that you have. And based on that, it throws you into one of these categories for a sedan, a station wagon, etc. Now, the deal is is that you know Teslas have a different ratio here of the exterior to the interior because the ex there's not all this extra stuff you need to pack in there. So even if the car is smaller on the outside, it's similar to like a BMW 3 Series. The interior is actually quite a bit bigger. So I wanted to see that, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but I think it's important to understand when you see like mid-size, what that means and why the Model 3 is even in that category. It's because it has over 110 uh, cubic feet of passenger plus cargo volume. So if you go uh, also on the fueleconomy.gov website, you can compare these vehicles. So I took all those ones in uh, in in that chart there. I couldn't put the Lexus because you can only do four. But you can see here on the specs, they list the passenger volume and the luggage volume, which would be the cargo volume. And you can see here that, yeah, the, uh, the BMW 3 Series is pretty close. One foot less there and uh, two feet less here puts it right at the edge. And that's why it's listed as a compact car. Now, the other ones here are quite a bit less. So uh, seven feet less of interior, uh, seven cubic feet uh, less of interior, and then two uh, cubic feet less of, of the luggage. Um, and then you can see the other one is also kind of low. So uh, that's really like where that comes from. And if you did want to compare these to their counterparts, which are truly midsize, you'd be looking at the BMW 5 Series, the Mercedes E-Class, and the Audi A6. Now, if you wanted to do that comparison, the economics work out even better in the Tesla Model 3's favor. And I'm not going to get into any of that now, but if you just look at the pricing, you know, these cars are pretty, pretty stinking expensive. Uh, and then, of course, the, the miles per gallon. This is the miles per gallon equivalent, which I don't like that number. But in any event, uh, it's it's pretty spectacular and, and pretty cool when you think about, oh, if you really, truly want to compare midsize, this is what you're looking at. And you can see they're all listed as mid-sized cars here. Uh, so, okay, that aside, what I wanted to do was do a comparison and see basically when this is gonna be the case. So they're basically arguing that the Tesla Model 3 will become the uh, best-selling mid-sized premium sedan. We'll, we'll just call them premium sedans. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I got some data here from Good Car, Bad Car. Uh, which is a really cool site that has auto sales data and stats 
right up our alley. Um, and they have all kinds of stuff, right? They're not just Tesla stuff, but they have literally like all every brand, everything, and they have some some really good stats. And so I pulled the data from there into this spreadsheet. Now the Tesla Model 3 stuff I have from Inside EVs, and then I included a forecast, and I'll talk about that here in a second. So what I have is I have a different tab for the BMW 3 Series, the Audi A4, the C-Class, and the Lexus IS. So I just put all that data together here in this spreadsheet, um, and then I pulled it into my favorite uh, data analysis software, Tableau. Now for the Model 3, what I did was I used their delivery ramp. This is a log growth model, and I'm kind of assuming the worst here, right? So we know that they hit 1,000 at the end of the first week in January. Then we know that they hit 2270 the first week in April. Uh, then I'm assuming worst case, and this is what I mean by that, that they will only ever get to 5,000 uh, peak production on that on that line um, in, in Fremont. So I'm trying to be as conservative as I can here, right? The first two data points here to estimate this model are accurate. They're from, they're historical. And then the peak is kind of the, the unknown, right? Like let's say that it were 6,000. Well, this ramp would change. So uh, I'm trying to be as conservative as I can. And how it's calculating is using a simple log growth function. So it's not really, I'm not making this up, right? This isn't a guesstimate. These are using historical data and math to generate a forecast. So it's, it's about as legit or, or, or you know, the, the same approach you may use um, if you were actually working at Tesla trying to figure this out. Now, they obviously have more data, um, so they can be more accurate with these things, and they can come up with uh, uh, better estimates of, you know, things like plan maintenance and all that. So, in any event, that's where my Model 3 uh, uh, predictions come from. Now, let me show you though how I put it all together and exactly um, what these numbers add up to. So here in Tableau, what I have is my competition forecast. So each different color is one of the cars. You have a BMW 3 Series, right? You have the C-Class, et cetera. And these little lines over here are all of the forecasts. So, you know, I can take a look at that and you can see the actual data. And that's what I downloaded and put into my model. So I think I can even, if I go to the forecast, um, add in the confidence intervals so you can kind of see what that looks like. Yeah, it's kind of hard because they're all overlapping, but you get the idea that um, th the line in the middle here is, you know, the best guess of, of, of what it would be. And it's based on historicals going back to 2010 for U.S. sales, again, from good car, bad car. So I think this is pretty accurate, or I mean, it should be fairly, fairly good. Um, then what I did was, uh, you know, I just kind of took it out as a monthly number and projected forward. So I added in those forecasts to all the other comp uh, com uh, all the competition. And then I took the delivery ramp, or I'm sorry, the production ramp for the Model 3, um, and I put that in. You can see it gets kind of wonky here uh, month by month. Um, but then when you add this and you put it as a running total, because what we want to see is the best selling, so you'd have a running total, what you get is this model here. Now, the super interesting thing about this is that the, the Model 3, remember, these other cars have been selling for years, so they're pretty much uh, pretty consistent. Right? That's why they kind of seem like flat, like they're growing, but they're they're relatively flat. It's because we, we can reliably predict how many cars are going to sell, how many they're going to make. Tesla, as of the last reporting, has still has something like 450,000 reservations. So I know I'm using my production ramp, but those are already sold. I mean, at 5,000 a week, as Elon stated, uh, it'll be almost two years before they fulfill all of the existing orders. So yeah, they may not have them all delivered, but they're already sold. And so here you have it. I mean, uh, going from where we're at now, April 2018, with the latest number, official numbers we have, using the production ramp and that growth model, uh, you can see that very quickly, within a, within a month, it overtakes the Lexus IS. Uh, two months, it, it, it ties up with the Audi A4. And then over in September, uh, yeah, I guess kind of somewhere in between August and September, the Tesla Model 3 becomes the best-selling premium sedan in the U.S. Um, and I know they called it uh, mid-size. It's not the real as we looked at, but uh, from there on out, it's just it's just all you know completely crushing it. So going back to June of 2017, when they first ever delivered 30 of them, to the end of this year. Uh, using this model here, we're looking at about 142,000 Model 3s sold. 
uh, pretty spectacular. And then from there on out, it just gets gets better and better. So the story uh, really, really um, is, is looking bright for Tesla. And this is most likely why they're predicting to be profitable in Q3 and Q4 of this year. So let me know what you guys think about that um, in the comments down below, because I'm doing my best to be conservative with my estimates. I'm trying to make this as accurate as possible. Uh, I, and obviously, I don't, yeah, there are some probably planned things and changes that I don't know about, so it won't be 100% accurate. But uh, even if th th this is directionally correct, um, with with a fair amount of, of error um, in the confidence confidence intervals, it's it, it's kind of a, an an inevitability um, that the Model Three will become the best in class. Consider you know you considering this competition, it's it's you know I'd be interested to, if I had, if I had more granular data and I had all these all the different models, you could see where it is. But I just wanted to expand upon what they put in that chart because I thought it was rather interesting. But I think they didn't do a great job really really uh, lining it up. Um, you know I think the the market size versus the actual number of sales was kind of weird um, in how they chose those specific models, but. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think this is great news for Tesla. Um, and so, so there you have it.